Well, I think the first step um, in any institution, and again, it's, it's, an, it, it's an institutional commitment if uh, one is going to do CAR T-cell therapy. It's not just a single physician or a physician's office. It involves multiple people. There's a, there's a chain of people that are involved from uh, the blood bank, uh, or transfusion service that receives the cells and thaws the cells uh, and it administers the cells um, to uh, um, the physicians and nurse practitioners and nurses that are that are caring for the patients during infusion and after infusion of the cells and uh, those uh, uh, people need to be educated not only in the those specific adverse of events of special interest that I've described, cytokine release and neurotoxicity, but also um, in terms of um, uh, handling the cells and uh, making sure that the uh, patient is in the proper environment for surveillance for subsequent syndromes, either as an outpatient or as an inpatient, depending on the product that's used. Most leukemia patients, kids, will be admitted to the hospital. So what's helpful is the sponsors of the um, two products that are um, have a commercial label, uh, that's Tisagen Leclusol or Kimraya, and the other one is uh, Axicaptoslatabeam Silalusol, which is called Yescarta. Um, they have REMS programs. So these are programs that will uh, educate uh, people at all, uh, at all points in the, in the chain um, uh, to um, what, what to expect, what the roles are, what the proper responses are, and actually have a test and things like that. So, and that's the first step in getting educated. Obviously, um, experience is important, and the only way you get that is by doing it. Um, I think, though, people that are new to it, in addition to the REMS programs, should uh, probably have a relationship with someone that is experienced. So if they run the problems, they have somebody they could call and, and uh, um, you know, and, and get uh, uh, bounce problems off of.